a little bit of a sad clap, but we're here to talk about something that happened recently, which was I am Katowice, and um, the topic of this video or this discussion will be game design versus game balance. So in front of us, uh, we have a, a Reddit post that was made uh, yesterday, 23 hours ago, and if you guys watched my stream before, my YouTube channel before, you know that I've said many, many times that Problem StarCraft 2 is not game balance, it's the game design, okay? I've talked about it, it's important to have the game be fun, extremely important, uh, to, to be able to do different builds and stuff like that, and I heavily disagreed with going towards the perfect balance because that doesn't exist when there's three races and they're all completely different so i'll go by these points um and and then kind of discuss uh what i have in mind i didn't really prepare a script uh but i do have a lot of things i want to mention and that i want to kind of get off my mind if you will now the reason why this was posted and the reason why People are suddenly aware of these things. Let me put on my uh, my slip, my doggo slippers. Um, the reason why people are aware is because we just had a tournament. I am Katowice, by the way, professional YouTuber, and the production was good. They had some disconnects, but I love the interviews. Um, I think the casters did a great job, but it was by far the worst tournament game quality was in a very long time in my opinion um the finals was in my opinion again the worst finals ever in starcraft 2 of a major event every single game at a tournament ended with proxies um all ends where a guy does two base all in he kills the guy or he gets defended and then the player just gg'd the longest i think we've seen in the the main event itself was like three base protoss or three base terran against zerg it never went to the late game uh the best series from the event was probably from the offline qualifiers showtime versus hero marine i, th I thought that series was great uh and also cure versus ty all the other or most like 95 percent i'm not exaggerating were actually terrible series they were three zeros they were like 10 minutes they were just bad um so let's get started people are reacting really negatively to another zerg winning a premiere which just isn't good for the image of the game had there been some bigger changes it wouldn't have been as bad but now the finals looked like every other zvp stomp in the past two three years we've had several times in the history of sc2 that lots of people were driven away from it due to perceived problems and i think we're approaching another one of those situations so the uh thread name thread title is i think the game needs a bigger shakeup than what we got with the last post blizzcon patch as soon as possible so to start things off i've always said this um and again if you watched any of my videos regarding patch notes I am always disappointed with how little it's being changed. And again, I don't think a plus five health on a Viking is a change. That's not a change, that's a balance change. That's not a design change. That didn't change anything in the game itself, right? Um, design change is the Zealots. They got, they got changed. They changed the way the Protoss plays. Um, I think adding an ability on a unit changes the unit, changes the meta. Just buffing and nerfing the stats on a unit was is just not good that's that's balance changes and nobody cares about that unless you're a pro player and then even pro players they're never happy and they're always complain so um another change design change was the infester getting infested terrans removed the problem is the other ability is so bad which i also said needs a buff and nobody uses them, right? But still, it's a design change that removed Infested Terrans. So, what's happening with the game? A lot of people will say Brood War doesn't need changes because uh, it, it hasn't gotten a patch in years and Brood War's fine. Why is that? Well, the game is balanced with maps. So, 
for those who don't know, Brood War hasn't been balance patched in like 10 plus years, which is StarCraft 1. And the way the win rates get balanced is if Zerg is, let's say, dominating in one season, they make less Zerg friendly maps for the next season. But why is it still entertaining to watch and why is it still good to watch? The reason for that is because all three races in Brood War have absolutely broken units. And that's fine. Because they are fun units. Reaver, it's a derpy unit, but there's always that moment when Reaver shoots, everyone's like, oh my god, is he gonna hit something? Defilers, they're crazy OP. Siege tanks, they're crazy OP. But they balance each other out because every race has those units and every race has units like like spider mines that can cause a lot of damage in a short uh, amount of time so starcraft 2 i feel like the game itself gets patched balance wise but design wise it's getting dumber and number and dumber and number over time so Again, I've mentioned this previously, the downfall of StarCraft II game design was when Blizzard started nerfing strategies. They didn't nerf a unit, they nerfed the strategy. So for example, 3 Rex Reaper is something I like to bring up quite a bit. Uh, as you guys know, it was used heavily, it had good win rate against Zerg. Was it too strong? Maybe, maybe not. But what Blizzard did is they nerfed it so hard that it became unusable. Nobody ever uses it anymore because it's so bad. Did that fix the balance? Debatable. Did that ruin game design and variety of the strategies? Yes, definitely it did that. Now, over the past four or five years, we're going downhill with how many strategies you can do and how many different openings you can do, whether you're, Zer whether you're Protoss, Zerg, or tear. Now, why is Zerg dominating? I mean, Zerg, uh, I don't want to pull up the stats, but Zerg won like 80% of the tournaments in the past three years. So why is this? And not just one Zerg. Many different Zergs won tournaments. So why is this? The reason for this is Zerg is a reactive race, and Zerg is a race that can explode in the economy the fastest. Each time you nerf a proto strategy, which by the way, the latest one was charge lot all ends, Zerg has less and less and less things to fear and less and less ways to lose drones, lose games and lose economy. So as the time passes, Zerg is not getting weaker, even though they might be getting balanced nerfs, Zerg is getting stronger because Protoss and Terran strategies are getting nerfed. Zerg versus anything these days is extremely easy to play from pro point of view because they know what's coming, always. That is the big issue. There was a time when Zerg used to play against Terran and Terran could go Hellbat hell drops, Liberator range opening, Banshees, Battle Cruisers, uh, Marine Hellion pushes, Widow Mine drops, and that's all numbed down and that all gets countered by Queens. So what does this mean? Well, Terran opens triple CC, they go into the mid game, and they go into the late game. Does the mid and late game necessarily favor Zerg? Perhaps not. But Zerg has nothing to worry about and they mass drone. And this is a game design issue. This is not a balance issue. Zerg making drones is not broken. The other two races are very low on options as far as how much they can punish the Zerg. And even if you kill sometimes 5-10 drones, if you lost all the units, Zerg will just remake in one round. And that's why I always say, you never kill the Zerg economy, you just delay it. That is the big issue. But on the other side, if a Zerg kills probes or SCVs, that's a killed economy because you're producing your workers so much slower. Now, the games at IEM were very boring. I'll just, I'll just straight up say, they were extremely, extremely boring. Why were they boring? Well, every game was exactly the same. Doesn't matter which player played it, every game was the same. Terran, I'll open triple CC, TVP, I'll open 111 and then I'll 
defend oracles or I'll push against blink and then blink is going to counterattack me and then I either go into third or I do a two base all in which doesn't work anymore because players are good so it just kind of goes into like three base versus three base one engagement and the game ends and this happened a lot a lot pvz I would say by far was the worst matchup to watch because Protoss's uh, Zest that got to the finals, spoilers, um, he did Twilight Council almost all his games. And Twilight Council is extremely bad against all ins. So what happened in the finals is Rogue saw that Zest is going Twilight Council, all, you know, pushes all the time, and then Rogue just all in him. Why didn't Zest open Robo or Stargate? Well, if you open Stargate against Zerg, Zerg sees a Stargate, they defend well against Oracles, and then it just mass drone. And then you get into that position, just like I was talking about uh, with Terra versus Zerg, where you go into the mid game, but the Zerg is ahead on economy. And that's, again, a game design change. Are Zerg units necessarily broken against Protoss or Terran units? I don't think so. I think the economy is the issue. Um, and at the end of the day, I might be wrong, but because the Zerg has such advantage economically going into the mid game, it's hard to tell with the unit clashes. Another thing, game design, Terran and Protoss are forced to attack the Zerg. Why? Well, because if they don't, they mass drone and then they overwhelm you with units. Now, someone might say, well, that's kind of how it always was. That's true, but you had a lot more options and it's so extremely easy these days as a Zerg to scout. Every natural has a place where you put the Overlord. And you can literally see Terran units moving out. You can see Protoss units moving out. Well, you know. What do you do with your tech as a Terran or Protoss? Now. I know this will probably to, especially Zerg players, sound just like a balanced whining. But. There's a lot more to Zerg's winning than just, oh, it's broken. It's the way that Terrans and Protoss have been nerfed strategically over the years, and they don't have options. And the options they have, the Zergs know about them, and as long as they hold, they win the game. That's how that works. Is it impossible to beat Zerg? No, of course not. I mean, a lot of Zergs lost that I am, but... The longer the tournament goes, right? If we start from, let's say we started from round of 32. Let's say a player A is a Zerg. He reaches the finals by be beating two Protosses, two Terrans, right? And let's say in the finals is a Protoss that played against two Zergs and two Terrans. The Protoss can look at the ZVP that the Zerg played and does, he, he won't really learn anything because again, Zerg is the raised the defense and mass drones. But on the other side, the Zerg will take a look at the Protoss, what he did in his series, and he will know, okay, well, these are the builds he's using, these are the builds he's good at, this is what I need to be careful about, and the Zerg can prepare for that. So basically, the longer the tournament goes, Protosses and Terrans, even the little strategies they have, they get minimized, and the guy that's facing in the finals, they he knows what they're gonna do. And I know someone's gonna say, well, you know, that guy can just switch it up, right? Well, you can, but when you're mentally prepared for something, like let's say uh, somebody's going in a match against me, right? I'll use myself as, as an example. And you guys know I mech a lot. So if someone is like, okay, I'm playing against Beastie, he mech'd every game, and I know he mechs. If I go into a series and I just play Bio, I'll probably lose because I'm worse at Bio than I am mech. But the Zerg is not doing anything worse. He's doing his best. And then if I do mech, well, he kind of knew I'm going to do it. Even though I'm good with it, he kind of knows about it. That's the issue. Zerg, as a race, doesn't suffer from these problems because of the way that race works. And before, in Wings and Heart of the Swarm, that was balanced out. Balanced out by, again, Terrans or Protosses having more options, more openers, more harassment options and more devastating to Zerg options. And another thing that Terran Protosses used to have is late game. Where did that go? 
patches happened and Terran and Protoss have no late game against Zerg. It's infested Terrans, did they help? Yes. But we saw that at Katowice, no Terran and no Protoss was aiming for the late game. Um, we didn't see anyone being like, oh, I'll just I'll just go back, chill, transition to, you know, Liberator, Battlecruiser Ghost, or Carrier Tempest. Nobody did that. They tried to end the game. Because they probably, from their practice, they think, they know, that playing against their late game is not a great idea. So the reason why I said this was balanced out before is... Let's say I play TVZ in Heart of the Swarm. If I do damage, I can actually go back and I can be, okay, I'll expand again to my fourth and I'll just start transitioning to Raven Ghost. These days, if you kill 10 drones, you can't say that. You, what you say to yourself is, okay, I killed 10 drones. I need to do a follow-up push in order to try and end the game. Well, guess what? Zerg players know this. And they will prepare and over-prepare for your pushes, and they will walk over them. So you might say, well, why don't you just stay back? Because then game goes to the late game, which is where you don't want to be. Now, in Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm, uh, Protoss and Wings had Vortex, which, is, which was extremely strong from the Mothership. Zergs didn't have Vipers. Carriers were really good. And the Zerg didn't want to go there. Necessarily. Doesn't mean they couldn't win, but they weren't like, ah, I'll just go late game, who cares? Uh, Terrans had mass seeker missile strategies, which I am very sad about that they're gone. And again, you could kill drones, and I was one of those people. I do the harassment, and I'm like, okay, I'll just chill. He's behind. He needs to counterattack me. I'll chill and I'll go to the late game, and we'll fight it off there. That doesn't happen anymore. And. That's kind of when I lost interest in Terran completely, when Secret Missile had no damage anymore. Because they that's what Blizzard, I think, doesn't really understand. They didn't nerf the Raven, they nerfed a playstyle completely. So you went from Terran having early cheeses, mid-game pushes, late game, to now late game being removed. And basically you either proxy, okay, Terran's not proxy, he will do a mid-game push. And that's it. That's all you have. Uh, if you look at Katowice, uh, TVZs, uh, a lot of them were Terrans pushing with bio from three base with one factory, eight barracks, and they either kill the Zerg or they die trying. So, again, these are not balance problems. These are design problems. You are forced as a Protoss and Terran to play a certain way. The longer tournaments favor the Zerg, because they're not revealing their playstyles and strategies. And the longer time passes, Zerg get more info, um, and they know what Protoss is and Terrans are kind of going to do. And again, this is why Zest got absolutely destroyed in the finals. He played against Terrell in semifinals, and he did uh, Adept Glaive's harassment into all ends or pushes, whatever. Serral, you know, lost 3 2 is a close game, and then Rogue saw that, and he's like, oh, so that's what you're doing. And he completely, absolutely destroyed him. So this is this is why the, the, the games were really stale. Uh, as the time passes, like I said, people kind of also figure out what the best strategies are. And pro players will practice what the best strategies are. And the more time passes in the game, even if you wouldn't touch the game, eventually it would go down to one single strategy that people consider is the best. That's just how it is. And by removing these options, harassment options, build order options, you are funneling all the crap into just one boring gameplay, in my opinion. Now, he continues, in my opinion, the games that I am felt really stale. I'm not saying that the players caster didn't do a good job. I also agree, they did a great job, uh, casters uh, and you know players played their best. But thinking back, I can't think about a single map that really stood out to me. It was all very generic, with the only exceptions may maybe being the two-gate cannon rush by Haas and Eno's proxy factory blue flame all in. In my mind, the only changes dispatch are Brutal or Proxy Infester not being a thing anymore and Thor's being slightly better versus Zerg. Otherwise, the game feels pretty much the same as last year. Legacy of the Void is turning 5 
years uh, old later this year. That means it will make up half of the entire time of StarCraft II. And with even the yearly patches, I think we're still overdue for some bigger changes. When Legacy of the Void came out, DK said there's a possibility of removing slash adding unit down the line, but I guess the skins really F with that. It's hard to justify removing a unit when people spend money on skins for it, and when you add something now, be it a new unit or an upgrade, that adds a graphical change like Zergling Wings, for example, need to add it in a whole bunch of skins. Now, recently, I think while I was doing a series, I had an idea. I had an idea. Is this live? Yes, it is. The most excited changes at BlizzCon for me are the game design. So, again, I, uh, when when last BlizzCon patch happened, I was very excited about Zealots being new. I was excited about Void Rays. Anything that changed the way you play the game, I loved it. Um, and I thought that was fun. Does that mean that they should do a change and finish it right there? No, but I want to see new things. Blizzard is trying to move towards a position where StarCraft will not need patches. And this is terrible for the game. Guys, this is terrible for the game. Because down the line, these strategies, they're going to keep numbing down. And you're going to have the most boring ass gameplay. Where it's not going to be strategy and tactics. It will be mechanics and mechanics. And nothing else. And that's not StarCraft 2. That is, that is the issue. With StarCraft being outsourced to IEM for the tournaments, there is absolutely no way that Blizzard will be adding or removing new units. As much as I hate to say it, I don't see that happening. I honestly think the best thing Blizzard can do is outsource the balancing to someone. I don't know how that would work, because, I mean, who would you give the balancing to, right? You can't give it to pro players. But we need new things in StarCraft 2. We Listen, when BlizzCon patch happened, I've had many people say, when I did the patch review, they were like, oh my god, I'm coming back to try the Void Rays. Then I did the Void Ray videos, I did the Void Ray series. People loved it. Do you know how many people message me that they installed StarCraft just to go mass Void Ray with speed Void Rays? Why? Because they were balanced or broken? No, because they were fun. That's the thing. So, a while back, I think I did a series and I discussed this. I had an idea. Which, I'm sure I'm not the first one to have it, right? But this popped in my mind. People in StarCraft in general are very against changes and against big changes. But that is only the pro players and people that are like GM Master 1. I know because I was one of them. I was very against big changes. Not so much as pro players these days because I also like funky games. Now, League of Legends, Dota 2, and all the big games, big esports games, what they all have in common is they constantly, that's right, they add new units, heroes, they change stuff, they change the map, they change the balance as well, but they change stuff and they keep it fresh. StarCraft? Boys, we're stale. Like, we need a, we need a shower, okay? So my idea was, we have so many units in StarCraft 2, in StarCraft in general. We have StarCraft 1 units, we have campaign units. So my idea was simple. A season should last six months, four months, six months, doesn't matter. And each season, Blizzard should remove two or three units from each race. So let's say they remove Oracles, or no, let's say they remove Phoenix, Stalkers, and uh, Disruptors, let's say, from Protoss, and they add Dragoons, Corsairs, and Reavers. Now, I know what the first response is. That's not gonna be balanced. Let me just fill you in on the what's going on in StarCraft. StarCraft's not balanced now. 
Zerg is extremely favored in winning tournaments at this point. So the game is not balanced now. And if it's not balanced now, and if it's not going to be balanced if those changes are introduced, why can't we have fun? Do you know, I guarantee there will be thousands and thousands of players. Imagine you're now playing StarCraft and somebody messages you and, you're, and they're like, dude, did you hear they're about to add Dragoons, Reavers, and Corsairs into StarCraft 2 multiplayer? Do you really think someone's going to hear that? They will start a fan and be like, eh, not interested. Of course not. Ninety percent of the people, if not more, when they hear that, they would go back to the game and install it. Now let me ask you another question. If someone said, dude, I know you haven't played Starcraft for four years, but check this out. This is crazy. They just added five health on the Viking. Five health, dude, it's gonna be insane. Do you think a single person would open Starcraft 2? Nobody gives a shit about it, guys. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody is interested in these tiny changes that don't change anything. They don't change the way you play. I mean, Vikings have been buffed and nerfed. Did they? Does anyone use them? Seriously? Against, like, mass air battles? No. Because they're made out of crap. They suck. They have different issues. But imagine, Dragoon... Reaver instead of Disruptor, and Corsair instead of Phoenix being added. Suddenly, Protoss will play different. Blink Stalkers will not be an Oprah anymore in PvT. Maybe Protoss will be opening, I don't know, Dragoon Reaver. Maybe they're gonna go um, Reaver into Fast Third. Whatever it is, it will be different. It will be fun. Again, it will not be balanced. But with each season, after playing with that, those units for months, you can then change the numbers in the units. The numbers are so easy to change and fix and, and work around. Imagine if they removed Vipers, they added Queens from Brood War. Imagine that there's no Spine Crawlers or Spore Crawlers, there is Sunken Colony, is that what it was called? And then you upgrade it into the penis thing or the, you know, thing. Would that break the game? Probably not. I don't think so. Would that make it more fun? I think so. Yes, I do think so. Um, why not remove tier two Hydra and add a tier one Hydra, remove the Roach and add something in, in a layer tech to work around Zerg's losing Hydras? Why not? And I know it will break the balance, but again, the game is not balanced now. In StarCraft, if we want it to be fun for not only new people, but for old people and people that are playing, it needs some kind of change. The changes I'm suggesting are extreme. I know that. But the thing about it, Blizzard doesn't need to necessarily change it as in multiplayer one-on-one -on -one, to force everyone to play it. Why don't we have brawls in StarCraft 2, like Heroes of the Storm, like Hearthstone, like Overwatch has? Why don't we have a monthly brawl where those changes are implemented and let's just see how they work? I'm sure that Wardy, Base Trade, whoever else will organize tournaments in those brawls because it's new, it's entertaining. People will try it out. And then you can kind of get a good, better feeling of if people like those kinds of things or not. I would love if they removed Hellions for one season and they added Vultures. Can you imagine how much that would change the game? Imagine they removed the, the Ravens that are complete trash and they added Science Vessel. Imagine having Irradiate in StarCraft 2. Like, think about it. Think, just hold on for a second and think about how much that would change the game. It wouldn't be StarCraft 2, it wouldn't be StarCraft 1, it would be a mix of those two. There's also units like from Campaign, Diamondback. That unit has been in the game forever, in Campaign, but it's never used in multiplayer. Why? What's the reason? Why not reintroduce the um, Warhounds? Obviously nerf them, they were broken as hell but reintroduce them to the game. 
you know? Remove Cyclones, put in Warhounds. Um, remove Hellions, put in Diamondbacks. Remove Thors, put in Goliaths. Why not? It would be so fun. Not to mention it would give me YouTube content for weeks, for months, right? Mass Vultures to GM. Mass Dragoon to GM. Sign me up, right? Imagine removing Broodlords and putting in the, the crap Broodlords from Brood War. Imagine not having free units in the game. Let me go a step further. Why not make StarCraft 2 economy work like Brood War economy with mining, where two SCVs can't mine on one mineral patch? Make a StarCraft 2 brawl and introduce it. Why not? There's no reason. And you can run these brawls for six months, a year, doesn't matter. It, it won't be a risk because it won't affect one of ones They will still be Resident Sleeper, right? They'll still be boring. But if everyone is suddenly playing Brawl and nobody's like then online cops become these brawls and not one of ones well, maybe the people want that. Maybe people want the new stuff and not the old stuff. At the end of the day, what I want from Blizzard is to try something. Like, don't go down this rabbit hole of... Oh, we're going to achieve the perfect balance. The longer the time passes, it's getting worse, guys. As far as game design and fun. Not balance. Game design and fun. It's getting worse and worse. Blizzard doesn't have resources for that. They can outsource a lot of these things. They can. And... I, I mean, I've talked about this as well. Why not add 2v2 tournaments? Blizzard has never tried in 10 years. When I was playing the 2v2 online cup for $100, I had 1.2k viewers playing that. Why? Because the games were new. The games were unique. It was fun. There were so many different matchups, so many different play styles. It was fun. Boys, nobody watched it because it was extremely balanced and skill-based people watched it because it was fun and i feel like fun is getting sucked out of starcraft 2 because of these boring ass changes you know one big reason why i started doing series to grandmaster i'll be honest because i got bored i got bored to open reaper fast expand into 111 <laughs> every single game they could do so many things remove hellbat put in firebat remove medevac put in medic it's all the same now sc2 is not brood war brood war can do without patches because a way bigger part of the game taking place on the mechanical side is just the simple fact that starcraft 2 builds are easier to execute which means there's a lot more relative importance on the strategical side of things debatable i don't agree with that without changes sc2 settles into a meta where there are like three two three ways to play a matchup properly which is then the only thing you're doing to, you're going to see and i think we're already way too close to that point Two, three ways, I think, is generous, depending on some matchups. I think there's like one, two ways for certain matchups. Considering that we're just at the start of the year. That's also true, guys. This is this is the first tournament in the new patch. And we're already bored. Right? Everything's figured out. It's already, you know, kind of like, oh, so we're basically doing the same thing. I can't think of a single time in StarCraft 2 where a dominant meta has been broken just by player adjustments. I've seen Artosis say that the Death Phoenix meta in PvT went away on its own, but that also only happened after the Adept HP got nerfed. Exactly. Do you guys remember Adept Phoenix? Now, I'm going to tell you as a Terran player, I despised, I hated playing against Adept Phoenix. I hated it. But now every Protoss opens 
Blink stock, like 90% of products says open Blink in PVT. And it's just like, okay. Um, so did Adept Phoenix need a nerf? I don't know, but if it did, you don't nerf it till the point where the units are, the strategy is unusable. You can't do that. You have to nerf, if that play style is broken, nerf it a bit. If you over nerf it, you remove the strategy, AKA you remove the fun. SC2 players, viewers and pros are used to lots of changes. The game has always been evolving and changing. Sure, there are uh, people who don't like changes, F them. But after 10 years, most of them most likely left by now. True. The players who do, like, who do like changes are the ones who are still on board after all this time. If the game stops changing, we're at risk at losing those players, viewers, pros. We need changes. If it's too much work for Blizzard, they could also maybe outsource it. The esports side and the map making is already outsourced. Why not do the same to balance? Or game design. Guys, again, uh, ask yourself, when is the most, when is the peak of StarCraft over the past 10 years? At the beginning of each expansion. See, people said, people said 2010, 2016, when did the Heart of the Swarm release? 2014 or 13? Thousand thirteen. For me, again, as a player, not as a pro player, not as a streamer, for me as a player of StarCraft 2, as just a, a gamer, those were my favorite times. I remember when I started playing Wings of Liberty, it was a clown fiesta. Nobody knew what they were doing. The bills were all over the place. Then people figured out Five Racks Reaper. Then people figured out how to defend it. Then it got nerfed. Then the meta evolved, then the blue flame hellions, then the siege tank pushes, then the proxy raxes. It just kept going back and forth. Why was it fun? Because new shit was on the ladder all the time. I remember seeing like some stupid proxy ass builds. Then people started lifting their bases to the gold and then doing one base all ends. And then we lost every single map that you could float to the gold base. Why? Because it was imbalanced. But that removed part of the fun. Then in Heart of the Swarm, do you guys remember the beta? When they added Widow Mines? When they added Hellbaths? When Warhound was being tested? When the Oracle was added? That was so fun. I remember I, I was like Oracles, Proxy Oracles. Um, Widow Mine started being used with Bio, and it was so fun to like. Do you guys not remember the matches with Bi Mass Bio with Widow Mines versus Mass Link Bane Muta? Then you could do. Th there were Hellbat drops. There were Cloak Banshees. There were Marine drops. Two on one Proxy Barracks. Three Drax Reaper. Th um, I don't know. It wasn't Three Drax Reaper. It was Two Drax Reaper, I think, because you needed Attack Lab. But the point is, there were so many playstyles. There was late game Terran. There was mid game Terran. There was Mech. There was Bio. Legacy of the Void beta. Disruptors. Disruptors were in Legacy of the Void, right? Pretty sure. Adepts. They were a new unit. I remember playing Legacy of the Void beta and loving it. I played so much Legacy of the Void beta because I was trying to figure out how. Like, imagine Liberator was introduced. And you gotta figure out, they just give it to you, and you gotta figure out how to use it. And players would use it, use, use it. And then I remember I was playing a lot with uh, QXC back then, and he would call me up and he would be like, check this out. I figure out a positioning on this map where you can push against Zerg, or check, check this out. There's a build on this map, you could do a proxy, and then it reaches this point. That doesn't exist anymore. Thank you, Vax. But see, thank you, Vax. Again, are they ba were they balanced? Were they broken? I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't want to say yes or no, because I did play Terran back then only. 
So if I say no, they weren't broken, people will call me biased. If I say they were, people will say, well, that's why they got removed. The point was, they were fun. I don't know if it was just me, but if you were playing Terran, I don't know anyone who said like, oh man, I hate these tanky backs. Nobody said that. It was fun to play Terran, right? Um, and over time, like I said, these strategies, these builds, these things, they get filtered out into boredom because Blizzard is trying to achieve a perfect balance it doesn't exist. I am all up for nerfing units that are extremely dominating. I'm all up for that. But not removing those units from the game completely. That's the real issue, in, uh, in my opinion. There you go. The top comment for this thread is the game feels stale because it is stale. Zerg has been downright oppressive for well over two years. This I am not a single Protoss or Terran dared to go late game against an equally skilled Zerg. Everybody went all in. And all ins are really cool when they are precise and calculated builds. They're significantly less cool when they feel like the only option. Boom! Right there. Right there. That is very well written. All-ins are great. I remember watching in Wings and Heart of the Swarm, watching finals of the tournament, and I see, no joke, I mean, I'm a nerd, right? I would see a Protoss at a Twilight Council, and then the casters are like, okay, what is it going to be? And the Protoss queue up, queues up charge, and then you see they pull the probes, one gate, two gate, three gate, four gate, six, seven gates, and you're like, oh shit, it's happening. Like, this is the finals, and he's going for 8-gate all-in. Now, why was that exciting back then, and why is that boring as shit now, and nobody wants to see it? Because that's the only thing we're seeing. That's the only thing we're seeing. People, don't get me wrong, people all-in the crap ton back in the day. In Wings, in Hots, Early Legacy. They did. But it wasn't the only choice. So when people did it, it felt like, aha, uh -huh, okay, strategically, he thinks this is his best chance to win. When I see someone all in now, it's like, well, he's all in because that's what you do in this matchup, especially against Zerk. And players don't have the option of choosing. They're forced into doing that strategy, a.k.a. removing the fun. Maps are balanced, something needs to give urgently because you can see in community response that people are truly sick and tired of Zerg... Z... Tarcraft. Z oh, Starcraft, I get it. And we're literally only one tournament into the patch. Oh yeah, this is so true. So Engineering Bay... It's called Engineering Bay, it upgrades Bio, but Armory, that should upgrade the Bio, it upgrades Mech. Think about that. I don't understand Protoss, therefore I won't write anything about them, but I think Terran gets freaked over by macro mechanics in mid to late game. Terran has to choose to either get a planetary or an orbital command on their ex external bases, and therefore either stays on par with the other races' macro mechanics or has to trade it for safety. You don't want to fall behind on Eco, but also don't want to lose 15 workers to a link run by. See, I always wondered why why did, does Protoss have cannons and shield batteries? Zerg has spine crawlers and spore crawlers, and Terran has missile turrets and what a bunker that you need to put units inside. Why is there no bunker, you know, with a little auto turret, like in campaign? Why doesn't that exist? I can tell you, as a Terran player, and as a Protoss player, since I'm no longer mainly Terran player, I would gladly trade Planetary Fortress for bunker that has an auto turret on it. Anytime. Because that would mean you have more orbitals to work with, that would mean you don't need units at bases to defend them. It would mean more scans, more mules, more economy. You would need less SCVs. You can focus more SCVs on the gas, less on minerals. Planetary is like, stay out of this area, right? 
people don't want to engage into it. But you're behind an economy because Zerg gets more and more larva, Protoss gets Chrono Boost, which is less important. But Terran doesn't get anything economically the longer the game goes. Yes, they can make more orbitals, but be honest, right? When was the last time you've seen Terran having 20 orbitals in a pro game, pro top level game, in a matchup that's not a TVT? Yeah. So... I, I, again, I would love to see something like this. Um, now, I know some people might say that, well, some random guy online can make these things in a custom map, right? They can take out the stalkers, put in dragoons. What's the issue? Well, the truth is, and this is not necessarily sad or whatever, but this is how it is. Unless Blizzard pushes something, the community will not follow. Unless we go down this lane for a couple of more years where people get extremely fed up and somebody does something about it. But even then, you would need thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to make the pro players make the switch from playing Blizzard tournaments to those custom tournaments with different units. So what is the solution to all of this? What is the conclusion? The conclusion is StarCraft is going in a bad direction game design wise. The balance is not getting better, it is getting worse as far as tournament representation from the races. It's getting worse for viewers I think in how fun the games are to watch. Again I was bored to hell watching Katowice. And Maybe it was a one-off, you know, I'll say that. Maybe it was a one-off. Maybe Katowice just had a bad streak of games. But there were a lot of games played at Katowice. And <laughs> if you think about it, that is very unlikely to have all the games be bad. It just happened, kind of thing. So, I don't think that Blizzard themselves at the next BlizzCon patch are going to say, Hey, we're removing two units, we're adding two new units. I don't see that happening. Blizzard wants to get StarCraft 2 in a position where it's self-sustained, both uh, financially and gameplay-wise. And Blizzard probably sees this as a big risk to do, which is why I suggested something like Brawl to test out things first. Now, does Blizzard have enough people actually working to do that? Probably not. Probably not. So what's left? Well, um, I've been trying to push and, and make people do more 2v2 tournaments. I enjoy playing those. I think people enjoy watching them. Not because they're better than one-on-one, -on -one, but because they're different. I would love to see someone come with a custom map where something like this that I said is done and they bring out $10,000 and they say listen I'm running a season it's gonna last three months we're gonna have qualifiers we're gonna have group stages we're gonna have playoffs in this completely new Starcraft 2 that's a mix of Starcraft 1 and 2 I would love for that ha to happen realistically who's gonna pull that amount of cash and you might be like, well, why doesn't someone organize $100 tournament? Well, number one, it's one tournament. Number two, if you offer Cyril $100 for the winning that tournament, he's not going to be like, oh boy, I'm going to go practice that tournament and that uh, thing with the new units for a week. He's not going to do that. The best thing that maybe happens, he shows up, which is not... But let's say he shows up, he just plays, doesn't use the new units at all because he doesn't know what they do and how they fare against other units. And it's just a bad experiment. So, that's it. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I would love to hear your guys' opinion. Uh, I think, again, as a pro player, I was always wanting to have a game that's balanced. But as a player that plays a little bit weird, I always wanted to have new things. 
I know this is not something that pro players want. Pro players want stability and game to be perfectly balanced, which is not going to happen. But I do think that casual players, players that are not competitive at the highest level, um, they want more fun. And this is something whenever I review the patches, people are always excited for the fun stuff and they don't give two shits for plus one damage, plus two damage, minus one damage, minus five health. Nobody cares about that. So I would love to hear your guys' opinion on Twitch in the Twitch chat, but also on the YouTubes. This has been Beastie Cutie, the rent master, ranting all day long. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching. If you're watching this on Twitch, let's keep going.